Hello guys, Tav HD here and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be trying to edit a video on this iMac and this in particular is a mid 2010 21.5 inch iMac. This is the baseline model I believe with a 3.06 gigahertz Intel Core i3, 4 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, it has the original hard drive in it and the graphics are the ATI Radeon HD 4670 with 256 megabytes of video RAM. And today we're going to see if I can edit a video off this. Now on this SSD here is all of my video projects for YouTube for 2020. So I've picked one of these and we are going to try and re-edit it but on this computer. So the one I've chosen is from January and it is upgrading the RAM and installing RAM into this exact computer. Now the file I uploaded to YouTube was about 3 minutes long so today we're going to try and recreate that in iMovie. So what I'm going to do is now plug in this SSD, I've got a USB adapter, and then we can get started. Now, I record these videos in 4K, as you probably know, and this video that we're going to try and re-edit was filmed on my Lumix G7. That records in 4K, 100 megabits per second bitrate. So, let's just take a look at how these clips perform on this 10-year-old computer, and let's just say it doesn't perform very well. So let's just play one of the clips here. Let's take a look. As you can see, it drops a lot of frames and this is just playing back one file. If I tried to edit in 4K on this computer, I highly doubt that it would work at all. So what I've done is I've used Handbrake. I've got Handbrake on this computer. I'm not actually sure where it's gone, but what I have done is encoded all the clips again, but as 1080p files, here they are. The 4K ones came to about 3 gigabytes in size, these ones are under 100 megabytes, and these ones play just fine. So what we are going to do, is we are going to edit on iMovie, this computer is running the latest operating system it can, and that is Mac OS Sierra. So I've got the latest version of iMovie that's compatible with Sierra and this is what we are going to try and edit the video in today. Okay, so I've now just jumped into a screen recording to hopefully make this a bit clearer to see because I was getting some terrible reflections off this glossy display. So this should hopefully be better. I'm not too sure what the microphone sounds like. It's been quite a while since I've used the microphone on this machine, but hopefully this will be just fine. So up here we've got our clips, so let's just move those onto the timeline there. They seem to have loaded in just fine. Let's yep, zoom in a bit, just like that. Let's go back to the beginning, deselect all the clips. And what I'm going to do is just, let's just start this off. And it doesn't look like my speaking comes in yet. So we've just got a bit of a beach ball there. And again, but it looks like my speaking comes in just here. So let's do Command B, split that clip, get rid of the first 20 seconds. We don't need that. Then let's just take a listen to this. Hello guys, happy. Yep, that seems just fine. Okay, so now I'll just listen through this bit. Okay, so there's a pause in me speaking here as well. So let's just get rid of this bit. It doesn't look like any of that is needed. So let's just cut that entire bit out. That's 16 seconds we don't need. Now there is a bit of a pause between me pressing the play button and anything happening, but that's not too much of a big deal. And the playback up here in the preview window, it seems to be just fine. We don't seem to be dropping any frames at all. So really, for 1080p, this seems to be working fairly well so far. So once I finish cutting all this base video, I'll come back and then we can add some effects and see how the computer handles that. Okay, so just then looking at this clip, I got a little bit of lag there and a few frames dropped. And again, it's so beach it balling, really but now it seems just fine. So occasionally we're getting a bit of lag and drop frames, but overall, so far from this first one and a half minutes, this seems to be going fairly well. Okay. 
Okay, so there we go. I've just finished cutting the video together, and as you could probably see, there are a few moments where the computer beach balled, but overall, that really wasn't too bad. Now what I'm going to do is pull up the file with my intro in it, and then we will add that to the front. Now I'm not going to use the intro that was actually used on this video when it was released, I'm going to use the more updated one. So let's go in and find that now. So here's the intro, Tav HD Intro 2020. So what I'm going to do is just drag that into iMovie. There we go, it's 1.4 seconds long, just let it load. There we go. So what I'm going to do is just drag that onto the timeline and put it in at the beginning and everything should move over for it just like that. So now let's take a look at this. Hello guys. Okay, so we need to add a transition between these two. So let's go up to the top here, go to transitions and when I used to edit on iMovie I would use a cross blur. So let's try that and see how this goes. Hello guys, Tap HD here and welcome back. Okay, so we've got lag there, so I couldn't actually see if the transition worked. Let's try that again. Hello guys, Tap HD here and welcome And again that was laggy and it dropped frames, so I can't really tell what that transition looks like. I'm just going to have to assume that it's fine, but right now Hello, guys. Oh, there we go. Let's see if we can do that again. Okay, that will do just fine that transition. So it just needed some time to load in and what I usually do at the end of the videos is just add a fade to black. So let's get that, pop it on the end there, then let's watch that. If we just wait for it to in catch up. One. Goodbye. That's not showing the fade to black. That's interesting. Can we get that to work? Ching and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Now I can't see the fading to black happening there, probably just because of the computer being older and it just can't handle it, but I'm assuming that in the final export it will be there. So that's pretty much what I wanted to do to this video, it looks like it's struggling with the transitions there, but hopefully they will be in the final file. So what I'm going to do now is go up to the top and we are going to export this as a file. Let's see, so we are going to call it 2010 iMac RAM install, let's make sure, yep, 1080p, high quality, that will be fine, compress faster, this is what I would usually leave it on anyway, about half a gig, that seems pretty decent, so let's go to next, let's choose where we want this to save, let's just put it onto the desktop, so then it's easy to find, and let's see, just how long this takes to export. So it says it's waiting and it is exporting my movie one. Hopefully it will change the name to what I selected. Yep, there we go, writing 2010 iMac RAM install. And it will show us the progress up here. And it says about 11 hours. Now it's gone down to two hours, one hour. So this is predicting quite a long time. Hopefully it will go down, but let's just see how long this takes. Considering this is only a 3 minute 33 file, hopefully it shouldn't take too long. On my MacBook Pro, this would take probably about 5 minutes, and on my PC it would be in about real time in 4K. So considering this is 1080p, this shouldn't take that long at all, but as we can see, the estimated time remaining is going down quite nicely. So now let's just wait and see how long this takes. Okay, so it looks like the export has just finished, and I must say that actually took longer than I thought it would, and I should also say that the computer is extremely hot. The front glass is very hot to the touch, and the back is genuinely burning my fingers when I touch it, so I don't think that that is very good, but let's just minimise all of that, 
and here is the file it has created. Here it is, and it has put the correct name. Let's right click on that, or oh, maybe not, and let's just see if this plays. So that transition did indeed work. Then let's look at the end. Did the fade out work? Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. And the fade out worked as well. And just looking here, it looks as if it's exported fine in 1080p. That looks fine to me. So I think that this export worked just fine. But let's right click and get info. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at more info. And yep, it has indeed done it as 1920 by 1080. So I am actually quite happy with that. It looks like this worked just fine. So this goes to show that you can edit 1080p video for YouTube on an older computer like this. This is a 2010 of course, and it can do it fairly decently as long as you're okay with having a few beach balls and a little bit of a delay sometimes. But overall, yeah, this worked very nicely and it's a lot better than my 2009 MacBook. That is a Core 2 Duo. When I tried to edit on that, that was terrible. So it's good to see how this being just less than a year newer makes such a difference. So yeah, I am happy with this. And there we go. I am pretty happy with how this machine coped. And the final file it created is one that I would be happy to upload to YouTube. There was no funny artifacting in the final video or anything like that. And it was perfectly watchable. The editing experience sometimes was a little bit laggy, but overall, I think for a 10 year old computer, this performed very well. And I think that that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it was interesting in some way. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.